Hey guys, it's MKX Jump here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the top five heroes, the five heroes for any idle heroes player, whether you're new, whether you're in the middle of the game, whether you're completely at the end of the game. These are the five heroes which all players should have at some point during their idle heroes career, because quite frankly, they are brilliant. So guys, many of you will be expecting me to just give you a list of the best five heroes in the game, but that would be completely pointless because there are tier lists out there from myself, Zeals, even Barry Gaming has a which E5 should you make first list. These are all things that, quite frankly, are easy to find and not really useful for most players because I can just tell you the best heroes in the game and then you'll be like, well, I can't get them, I can't build them, that's not useful, that's not going to help me because I can just say, build Ada. And you're like, well, I can't get Ada copies. She's really hard to get because she's a light hero. So that's not what this list is about. This is a list of heroes for everybody. The best five heroes any player will need and never get rid of. Heroes you'll use from beginning to end. These heroes are fantastic. So let me just give a few honorable mentions. The first thing is going to be all light and dark heroes. Every single one of them. The reason? Because they're not technically accessible for all players. That means Amon Ra, Ada... Mim, Belrain, these heroes that are very useful and arguably you'll never get rid of, but they're difficult for early players to get their hands on. It's I, it's easy for me to say, hey, build Ada. She's the best hero in the game. Build Amon Ra. She's necessary for all PvP teams. But guys, quite frankly, that's not useful. And it's, it's, it's hard to get her. Lots of free-to-play players may never ever build themselves an Ada. So that's not what we're going to be doing. Secondly, guys, another honourable mention is Norma. Now, Norma is fantastic for early and mid-game players because you can build her up to 9-star, and when she takes hits, she heals herself, she deals great burst damage, she's accessible for everyone right at the beginning of the game. If you register your account, you get a 5-star copy of her for free, and nearly all early players should get her to level 100 immediately because, quite frankly, she is terrific at the beginning of the game. But she drops off very quickly and you will fodder her 9-star copy because unfortunately, guys, you can only take her to 9-star. You cannot take her to 10-star and beyond. And that's because she has a 4-star form. Any hero that can be 4-star is not able to be taken to 10-star or higher. So normal will instantly get removed and that means that she's not there for all players. Finally, guys, it's Starlight. Starlight is a final honourable mention because she is a terrific hero for mid-game players. Builder is your first E3, Builder is your first 10-star. It doesn't matter. She is fantastic on her own with a load of weak heroes. The reason being, when heroes die, she heals herself and she becomes stronger. So if your five other heroes are weak, they'll die, and then she will burst with a massive active skill, killing the opponents. Now, unfortunately, that tactic begins to drop off towards endgame because lots of teams become much more resilient to that kind of thing, either from having massive health pools, having great healing, or having defenses such as Unbending Will that just stop you from dying. So Starlight doesn't really shine towards the end of the game. So again, she's not a hero for all players. So guys, that takes us now to our top five. Honorable mentions are over. Let's begin our top five list. In fifth place, we have what I shall call nothing short of the Holy Trinity. It's Horus, Garuda, and Penny, all in joint fifth. Now, these three heroes represent balance and unity in the game. And I mean that in that they are fantastic in PvP, PvE, Seal Land. They are just holistically brilliant heroes. They are fantastic in everything. You can have a Horus solo you up to Seal Land 15. Penny can push you really far in Seal Land, almost to the top if you run her alongside heroes like Emily and other CC heroes for support. You can run a Garuda and still get very far in Seal Land, and Garuda is the pinnacle of universal heroes, dominating the PvP scene and also performing incredibly in PvE. These three heroes, if you build them in the current meta as it stands at the beginning of 2020, will do you proud. They are the best E5 heroes that you can get that will perform amazingly across the entire board, not including light and dark heroes. So guys, I'm going to put them out there right now. Horus, Garuda and Penny, fantastic solo carrying heroes across the game. In fourth place comes Deathsworn. Now this may surprise 
a lot of you. What does this measly four-star formed hero in the Shadow Faction have to offer? Well, Deathspawn has a burn ability that allows him to burn all of the opponents until they die. And that's very useful in PvE. If you can set up burn on all opponents, it means that Phoenix's ability that boosts damage against burning opponents will happen on them, guaranteed. You can't remove the burn, the burn never disappears. Once it's on, it's on, and they will burn until the end of the fight because PvE bosses do not die until they are finally defeated. So the point of this is that you're burning the opponents and always getting that bonus damage whenever it's active. And that's why Deathsworn is essential for pretty much any PvE team that just needs that little bit of extra burn damage. It will massively change your numbers and improve you incredibly if you run the Phoenix pet. And that means, guys, Phoenix pet is essential for nearly every player as well, because, let's be honest, Phoenix is awesome. She heals, she provides burns, she provides holy damage and crit boosts. Quite frankly, she's the best all-round monster you should have too. So, combine Phoenix with Deathsworn and you have a PvE wrecking crew that will help any PvE team at all. Next, guys, we have 9-star Cruise. Now, the first thing is, why Cruise? Well, Cruz may seem like an unassailing hero that doesn't deal that much damage, but first off, his active skill is capable of giving not only your heroes energy, but also reducing the abilities, power, and defenses of the opposing heroes as well. That means you'll deal more damage to those opponents, making it more likely that you'll come on top of the fight. Now, the very, very important thing for that is that it strips away armor, which is fantastic for PvE to help you get through those massively armored PvE bosses. But as well, there is a usefulness in PvP. Cruz's final passive, which he gets at 9-star, provides him with the ability to stun the opponents when he's dropped below 50% health. Now, at 9-star, this ability has a 75% chance of stunning the opponents, which is very, very useful, no matter what stage in the game you're in. Now, you can use this on your secondary teams in the interdimensional arena if you're in endgame to make sure you steal some nasty wins by stunning the opponent's heroes. You could also use this if you're building up from mid-game, early game. It doesn't matter to mitigate the usefulness of your opponent's potential E5 heroes to make sure that your selection of E5 heroes are on top. Maybe you've only got E3s, but you want to be able to ruin that opponent's team really quickly. Maybe that's what you need to survive. Now, the main thing here is the Cruise can stun them for two rounds, and wiping a hero out of the game for two rounds is, is pretty good. So Cruise in an early-game PvP environment is amazing. In a mid-game PvP environment, still amazing. If you're in endgame and still looking for heroes to add to your collection of E5 heroes, stick a Cruise in there. He will not fail you. Now, at complete endgame, where people have full teams of E5, it's very unlikely you'll be running a Cruise, but he will still have his armor reducing for pve and he will also provide you with fantastic stun that you can use on your secondary teams in the interdimensional arena to make sure you bag those extra wins now guys we move to second place and if you haven't guessed it already you're going to be surprised with this one it's sigmund now sigmund in my opinion is one of the most underrated heroes in idle heroes and that's because lots of people overlook him because he's not very good in PvP, and most people only build him to 10-star for PvE, so don't really get to see his true potential. But there have, and people will know of cases, where even a 10-star Sigmund is able to deal more damage than some E5 heroes that are reputable in PvE. The great thing that Sigmund offers is Burn, which synergizes with Phoenix, as we mentioned with Deathsworn. He also shreds away armor, which increases your team's overall damage. He has exceptional damage over time, which shreds away at the health of PvE bosses. And finally, he's just a fantastic tank, because he can take hits and he counterattacks, which adds to even more damage. What Sigmund provides, then, is a damage platform that reduces armor and burns the opponent, so he provides so many crucial PvE roles in a single hero, which means you're only using one slot on your team to get all of these abilities in. This is why he's higher than Deathsworn, because Deathsworn only provides burn, so you'll probably need a Cruise in there as well to reduce armor. However, Sigmund provides both, which means you have more room to add in your damage dealing heroes or necessary healing and support heroes to make sure that you can get through to the ends of the fights into round 15. 
So if you're using Sigmund, you are being the most effective in your PvE as you possibly can. And therefore, I think Sigmund is necessary for all players, whether you're just building him to 10 star for burn and for armor break, or whether you want to take him all the way to E5 to maximize his damage potential against bosses. Now, guys, if you haven't guessed it by this point, the number one hero on this list that I think every player needs on their roster is Heartwatcher. Now, Heartwatcher is a hero that doesn't get a lot of limelight because you won't be seeing her in PvP action very much. So you won't be seeing her crop up in teams. You won't see her on the scene at all. And that's because Heartwatcher has one use and one use only. But dear Lord, does she do that use well. Heartwatcher provides marks to opponents which increase their damage taken. And this increase is up to 300%. That means you can do four times more damage than you normally would. And it doesn't matter whether this Heartwatcher is 5 star, 6 star, 7, 8, 9, 10, E5. Who cares? Because these marks will stack no matter what level she is. The important thing is keeping her alive. A lot of us find if you give her a runes power and you let her sit at 10 star, that's normally enough with a decent heal. However, others may find that you want to take her up to E3 to give her Purify so that she can't get noodled by those annoying CCs so she can get her marks off quicker. The important thing though, guys, is that she's increasing your damage. And increasing your damage is insane in PvE where the only important thing is getting that damage number as high as possible. And all players will be doing broken spaces every month. You'll be doing your utmost best to fight the guild bosses and eventually pray for fire and that means heart watcher is going to be useful at every single stage in the game and all players need her at 10 star at some point point. and that's because guys let's be honest she is perfect she's flawless she gives you everything you need in a pve hero and should be on every single team now some people question and go whoa my heart watch is not doing that much damage trust me she is it's just not being applied to her if you remove heart watcher from the team your damage will shrink Put her on the team, though, and your damage will rock it back up. Heart Watcher is necessary for every single PvE team out there, and every single player should have one, no matter what stage of the game you're in. So guys, get your hands on those Heart Watchers, and do not fodder them, even though she may be low on all the PvP tier lists. So guys, there you go. That's my top five heroes that all idle heroes players need. The Holy Trinity, Garuda, Horus, and Penny. Deathsworn, Cruz, Sigmund, and Heartwatcher. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if it's helped you, why don't you leave a comment down below. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe, even give it a like, and uh, yeah, or maybe give it a dislike. If you didn't like it, go ahead. I don't mind. <laughs> Tell me everything I did wrong. I can always use the constructive criticism. If you guys want to check out some more of my content, you can find it on the side of the screen here now, and thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to support me, you can find links to my Patreon down below, and guys, I wish you the best of luck, have a great week, and happy idling.